David and Kim, thank you so much for that testimonial. Folks, I'm a sitting duck for this disease. I remember grandmother dying in our home in Los Angeles with this disease, diabetes, and therefore, I'm a sitting duck. Grandma had it, Doug's gonna have it. Is that the way it goes, really? That's what we're led to believe because scientists really don't know the etiology or the cause of diabetes. Maybe this slide uh, presentation will really help some of you out there. So what causes diabetes? They say the cause remains largely unknown, like they do all autoimmune diseases. Isn't that frustrating? But I say fungus and the poisons they make that are in our foods might cause this disease. Someday they'll know that, but currently the disease is a huge financial drain with no end in sight in America. And here's a hint. The gliburide you're taking, the glyposide you're taking, and other drugs have antifungal properties. Now, that is not a green light to take these drugs. Uh, that's a green light to say, Doc, if there's dangerous side effects to these drugs I'm taking that you've told me about, what about natural things? Kyle's going to teach us some of that today. Let's go to the next slide. Here are some of the costs of diabetes today. A $130 billion increase in 10 years from 97 to 07. Where is the incentive in medicine, folks? Where the, is the incentive for these endocrinologists? to say, we've got to end this problem. Somebody's making a lot of money on this disease, the drug companies, the medical communities, et cetera, and they're none of them bad people. They just don't understand the cause. What if this disease was very treatable, treating it as though a germ got in your body, okay? Let's get started. Diabetes, the fungal link to diabetes. Dr. White, in 1788, observed that people with diabetes also get gout. You ever had that, the sore big toe or joints? In 1954, Dr. Griffiths discovers that uric acid causes gout. Okay, but where does uric acid come from? I'll never forget my friend Dr. A.V. Costantini having an envelope with $1,000 in it at a big medical symposium, and he said, I'll give to anyone in this audience this $1,000 if you can prove to me that the human body makes uric acid. It doesn't. But fungus does, as you shall see. Let's continue on, because in 1963, this Dr. Svlia discovers that brewer's yeast makes uric acid. Brewer's yeast, wait a minute, Doug, I drink alcohol. That's right, Dad drank a lot of it and he got diabetes. 1990, Dr. Coleman feeds mice a 10% diet of brewer's yeast and they get diabetes. Sounds like Super Bowl Sunday. All of us probably had brewer's yeast on Super Bowl Sunday and then we scratch our heads and wonder why we're so depressed and why our blood sugar is elevated on Monday after the Super Bowl. Okay, next slide, uric acid, food, and diabetes. Look at this. A doctor doing autopsies, Isogai, in Japan, finds the fungus cryptococcus in the pancreatic cells of two kids who died of diabetes. Later, they inject this cryptococcus experimentally into animals in their pancreatic artery, and it destroys the pancreatic islet cells, the very definition of type 1 diabetes. But look at this. What's type 2 diabetes? In type 2 diabetes, the body does not produce enough insulin or the cells ignore the insulin. I pulled that right off the internet. Okay, but why is that? Are we simply dealt a bad hand by grandma and mom and dad, or is our diet responsible without any of our doctors understanding this? And that's where I wanted today's show to go. There is something you can do about diabetes to prevent it and quite perhaps to treat it. The medical community isn't there yet. Help them understand this. Next slide, peanuts and corn, any of that in your diet? These foods and grains in general are commonly contaminated with mycotoxins aspergillus and penicillium. And they make poisonous byproducts called acrotoxin, aflatoxin, and patulin. Don't go away. Watch this. Acrotoxin creates insulin resistance. That's the definition of type 2 diabetes, and it damages a kidney. Any of you have kidney damage? Patulin inhibits human cells from using oxygen. Fungal cells can live without oxygen. Human cells can't. So it's a perfect environment for fungus to grow in your body. And finally, aflatoxin, known by scientists to cause cancer, blocks the breakdown of sugar in your cells and liver, so our blood sugar levels remain elevated and fungus thrives in a high sugar environment. Isn't this amazing? Don't you wish our scientists understood all of this? We take something very simple and it becomes blown out of proportion. It's very complex. Well, Doug, we can't possibly explain everything about type 1 and type 2 diabetes because even our doctors, even our scientists, even our professors in medical school had no idea. Could we have figured this out and the medical community hasn't? Is it all the penicillin you took for sore throats when you were a baby? Is it the alcohol you got into when you were 21, 22 years old? What if you had diabetes, Doug? What would you do? 
The final slide says, number one, I'd find a doctor who understood the role of yeast and fungus in this disease. I really would, and that's the most important thing you can do. With his or her permission, I'd change my diet to our phase two diet uh, without grains, any grains. Our phase two diet allows a few grains, but I wouldn't eat any grains during this period of time. Third, and really important, I'd remediate fungus with antifungal supplements. You're going to learn all about that with Kyle and Kristen here. And then I'd enhance immunity with supplements like beta-glucans. I'd exercise on a regular basis. I believe sweating detoxes the body of some of these toxins. We're going to talk about all that and more on today's Know the Cause.